So I got a quote for a SIM once, or a security instant and event management solution. The SIM that I looked at was gonna cost the organization over $100,000 to license the software, an unrealistic amount for most small and mid-sized companies. So I got to thinking, and one day, as I was musing the cybersecurity issue, as I quite frequently do, I had a question. Could you build out an entire cybersecurity program, I mean everything, using only free or open source solutions? So I set out to figure it out. I got the SIS 20 cybersecurity framework and I started listing security controls for every step of the framework. But I quickly realized that would be a really long video, more like a course. So I scratched the idea and I decided it might be better suit it as a course for the InfoSec Academy. Instead, for this video, I picked nine of my favorite open source security tools for small and mid-sized companies. And I'm going to share them with you today. So let's go. If this video is interesting, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing so you're notified when we release future videos. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I have nine tools that I want to share with you, but I didn't want this to be just another one of those videos listing out a bunch of something or another. I wanted to give you a rating on the learning curve for each tool to help you understand how difficult it might be to use. And this is all based on my experience with each of these tools. Because you see, when you use open source tools, you're often trading time spent implementing and learning for the commercial plug and play solution. And in some cases that might be worth it, in some cases it's not. So let's talk about the tools and how difficult it is to learn them and implement them. So the first tool I wanna to talk about is OpenVAS. OpenVAS is an open source vulnerability scanner that you can use to run authenticated or unauthenticated vulnerability scans against your network. Now an authenticated scan is more thorough than an unauthenticated scan because it authenticates against the computer looks at the applications, the software on that computer or server, and it checks the versions, looks for misconfiguration vulnerabilities, et cetera. With an unauthenticated scan, it is just looking, quote, externally what it can find out about the uh, device, the server, the computer that it's looking at. Once the vulnerability scan is finished, it rates all of those vulnerabilities based on a criticality scale. And this can be very useful for prioritizing which vulnerabilities need to be addressed in which order. Vulnerability management, of course, is a very, very important part of a security program because if you can reduce vulnerabilities, reduce your attack surface, you have a better chance of keeping the attackers out. When it comes to the learning curve for OpenVAS, I would rate that as a three out of five. When, once you get it set up on your, the server that you're gonna be running it from, it takes a little bit of learning to get used to the interface, and it's not quite as intuitive as some of the commercial versions I've used like Nessus, but it's still, it's a great tool. It just takes a little bit of getting accustomed to the interface. One of the downsides of OpenVAS is that it only covers about half as many of the vulnerabilities as Nessus does, and it requires manual updating. You have to manually go update your library, update the Nessus client, and then you can continue running scans up to date with what they are giving you. They do have a paid version of OpenVAS, which has more vulnerabilities and is more up to date than the open source version. When it comes to the spec requirements, the hardware needed, OpenVAS requires at least two processor cores, at least two gigs of RAM, 10 gigs of hard drive space, and it can be run in a VM, VMware instance or virtual box. The next open source tool I wanna to talk about is Qualius. Qualius is a suite of cybersecurity tools, asset management, cloud management, vulnerability management, all kinds of things you can do with it, but they have a free component that is a very, very nice asset management tool. The Qualius free version is, an, like I said, it's an IT asset management solution. And of course, managing your assets is a very critical part of cybersecurity because you can't secure it if you don't know it exists. We saw this with the Equifax breach, right? The initial compromise happened on a server that didn't receive a patch because they forgot they didn't have it in their asset inventory. So Qualius, the free version, it is cloud-based, but there's an agent you install on a server on-prem and that agent will scan your network for new devices. You can also install the agent on new computers and servers as you go along, and it will report back to the cloud dashboard where you can see uh, software vulnerabilities that might be in place, things, patches that need to be implemented. You can see the specs, device name, etc. When it comes to the learning curve, how hard it is, I would rate this as a one out of five. This is a very easy tool to use and learn. Again, it's cloud-based. It's got a very nice user interface and there's not much to learn to use it. It's pretty intuitive. Regarding spec requirements, there is no specs. There's no hardware needed. You don't have to install this on a server. 
you can use the agent on the server to conduct scans inside of your network. And I would recommend doing that if you're gonna go with Qualius, but you don't have to. Okay, moving on. The next tool is Clam AV or Clam Antivirus. Clam AV is an open source antivirus engine. This gets to the antivirus versus EDR argument. I'm a big proponent of using an EDR software because they are more advanced than traditional antivirus that uses signature-based uh, detection. Attackers are using more live off the land type techniques where they're using PowerShell, um, components built into Windows, maybe using Cert Util, Certificate Manager to pull down malware. There's all kinds of things attackers can do that don't necessarily trigger a traditional signature. We also have the issue where attackers are able to develop and improve their attacks their infrastructure before those traditional uh, signatures can be even be written. That being said, Clam AV will not stop all attacks, but it will definitely stop the basics. When it comes to the learning curve, I would rate Clam AV as a two out of five. And the reason I rate it a little bit higher than one out of five is because it does require some um, command line interaction. If you're using Windows, you can use PowerShell. If you're on Linux, you're gonna use Bash, or on Mac, you're gonna use Terminal to install. So it does require a little bit of knowledge of command line, how to operate it and install it. A downside is that you have to keep the antivirus and the database, those both of those components up to date manually. So it does not automatically update. So that is something to keep in mind if you decide to use Clam AV. Regarding operating systems, you can run Clam AV on Linux, Windows, and Mac. So it's pretty versatile regarding operating systems. Now, if a small organization or small company decides we want to improve security, probably the first thing they're going to think about is let's install a firewall, an enterprise grade firewall, upgrade from the default one that comes with our AT&T or Comcast subscription, right? But what do you use when it comes to open source? I've got a tool for you, PFSense. PFSense is an open source firewall and network security tool. It's a really versatile tool and has a lot of capabilities. PFSense is free BSD based. When it comes to learning curve, I would rate this as a three out of five. The reason is you have to create a bootable USB using something like Rufus. You have to put that ISO onto that USB and then you have to go install it. Once you get that installed, you can begin setting up your firewall using PFSense. PFSense doesn't really work that well on a Raspberry Pi when I tried it. Uh, regarding spec requirements, you need at least a 64-bit system, at least one gig of RAM, two gigs of disk space. You're gonna want two network cards because you're gonna have your WAN connection on one NIC and your LAN connection on another NIC. So having two NICs makes that very useful. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to get some kind of USB to Ethernet ad adapter. And you're gonna need a USB port or a DVD port for the actual ins installation. A great way to do this is to buy a mini PC or some kind of small PC that has two NICs and you can set that up and have a really robust firewall with enough RAM to handle all the throughput. And if you, especially if you start getting to VLANs, segmentation, things of that nature, 802.1x, you're gonna want more RAM available to that. Maybe I'll do a future video on the setup and configuration of that. If, you, if you'd like to see that, leave a comment and let me know. So I'll know if I should make that video or not. Tool number five, moving on, is Wiser Training. Training your employees is a very, very important part of your cybersecurity program. Your employees are your first and your last line of defense. They are the ones interacting with emails on a daily basis, browsing the web, logging in, etc. They are attackers' favorite target. Social engineering is a huge part of cybersecurity attacks these days. Some people even believe that 97% of cyber attacks involve social engineering at some point in the life cycle. One of the simplest ways to combat this is to train your employees to be more security aware. When it comes to the learning curve of Wiser, Wiser is one of the simplest training solutions I've worked with. It can be completely automated and self-managing. It will send the training, send the phishing simulations on an automated fashion. I've actually been privileged to work with the team over at Wiser on some projects, helping them with phishing templates, some of their training, making recommendations, and helping them. If you are a member of the InfoSec Academy, I can get you a discount on Wiser training. So if you're an Academy member, be sure that you check that out in the resources and tools tab. Tool number six is the Elk Stack. The Elk Stack is a conglomerate of three tools, actually. It's an open source and analytics engine that can be used for analyzing various types of data, including security incidents or like a SIM. 
There's three components, Elastic, Logistash, and Kibana. And together, these three tools, these three open source tools, create a very robust analysis engine that you can use to scan network traffic, look for TTPs, threat indicators, indicators of compromise in your environment. You can pull in threat feeds and compare that to the logs in your environment. In fact, Security Onion, a well-known network analysis tool, that it, again, that one is open source, also not on our list today, but they have a new one they just released called Hybrid Hunter. Hybrid Hunter is an ISO that you can install on a computer, and it is really built on the back of the ELK stack. It uses a lot of those components. When it comes to the learning curve, I would rate the ELK stack as a four out of five. Once you get it installed, it definitely takes some knowledge of network analysis, threat analysis, bringing in those threat feeds, analyzing your network to be able to be useful creating alerts and identifying threats. On the spec requirements, the ELK stack, if you are going to install it locally, requires two gigs of RAM and 20 gigs of storage. Now, they do have cloud-based systems that you can use on a subscription, and you get some extra features and you get the cloud storage. The next tool, tool number seven, is Waza. Waza is a component that goes on top of the Elk stack that we just talked about. And Waza is a really nice threat detection and security monitoring solution. It, like I said, it does require Elastic and Kanban. It's really built on top of that. And you can install it two ways. You can install it all on one system or you can install it on two separate systems and correlate them. When it comes to the specs for Waza, Waza requires four gigs of RAM, two CPUs, and a 64-bit operating system to run on. Okay, moving right along to tool number eight. Tool number eight is Packet Fence. I found Packet Fence quite a few years ago and I instantly fell in love with it. Packet Fence is an open source network access control software. If you've done any shopping around for cybersecurity tools, you know that network access control solutions can be very, very expensive. In fact, I did a pen test once on a financial organization, a bank, bypassed their network access control. They spent $100,000 that year after that pen test, improving their NAC to a new software. So it can be very, very expensive. It allows you to create things like captive portals for employee login. You can run that authentication against Active Directory or Free Radius or any kind of open source um, network authentication solutions. You can create a VPN inside of Packet Fence for remote management. You can set up layer two isolation for devices that shouldn't be on the network. You can set up 802.1x authentication. It's a really powerful tool and the role-based access control integrations are really, really nice. Now, when it comes to the learning curve, I would rate Packet Fence at a four out of five. In my opinion, the interface was not the most straightforward, and there were several items where you had to go configure one thing and then come back to configure what you're trying to work on. Um, and it wasn't always clear what you needed, what were those prerequisites that had to be in place. Once you get the hang of it though, it's a very, very nice tool. When it comes to the spec requirements needed, you're going to want to de dedicate a box with a good amount of CPU at RAM. The way this works is, much like PFSense or the open source firewall, you're gonna be routing traffic through this, or maybe you set up span ports to send up traffic through this box. That being said, it's gonna be receiving a lot of information to process, and you want some CPU power ready. The final tool that I wanna talk about today, the final open source tool, is the Atomic Red Team Framework. The Atomic Red Team Framework is a great tool for testing your security defenses. You might not have a budget or money to hire a penetration testing company or a red team engagement company. Those can be very expensive, but you can use the Atomic Red Team Framework to test your security defenses. What can it catch? Do you have alerts in place? When it comes to security detection, you want to have alerts in place. What good does it do if you your security tool finds a system and doesn't alert you to it and it sits there unnoticed for months? And that is where the Atomic Red Team Framework can come in. You can use the tool, run a series of tests, just like attackers would, and see, does your system detect it? Does it create an alert and alarm for you? Now, what is the Atomic Red Team? The Atomic Red Team Framework is a, actually a library of tests. They are mapped to the MITRE attack framework. It's PowerShell-based, and it allows you to test your security defenses to see what can you actually detect. The tests are broken into a few categories like reconnaissance, the initial compromise, 
rate, establishing persistence, escalating privileges, internal reconnaissance, lateral movement, data analysis by the attackers, exfiltration, and the mission complete on the attacker's part. It's PowerShell based, and each tool or test takes less than five minutes to run. It has modules built in to run the test, show you if they were detected, if they were blocked, and it will even clean up after itself when you are done. On the spec requirements, there's no installation required. It is a PowerShell module, so you just need to download this module onto your system. You might need to turn off the antivirus or uh, the security components on the system you're gonna be running it from because they might try to block some of the test. You run the to all of the tests from the command line. You can run all of them. You can specify which categories. You can run individual tests one at a time, however you wanna do it. When it comes to the learning curve, I would rate Atomic Root Team as a two out of five because again, like the other ones we have discussed, there is some PowerShell and command line knowledge that is needed to run these, but it's very easy to learn, very intuitive, and it's not hard to work with. So those are nine of my favorite open source cybersecurity tools for small and mid-sized companies. If you have an open source tool that you like, you like in cybersecurity, please leave a comment. I'd love to learn about the tools you're recommending. Be sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you get notified when I release my next video.